Feynman path integral problem 2-3 solution. Uh, more solutions on chrisbritton.com. Uh, this problem 2-3 asks, what is the classical action S for a particle under a constant force F? Uh, the given is Lagrangian, because that is. Um, so to start, we'll start with the basic equation from kinematics, x of t equals a plus bt plus ct squared. Uh, and this is very similar to this equation from undergrad physics, right? x sub 0 is the initial position, that's like a, uh, velocity sub 0 is b, and then uh, a, 1 half a is c. Okay, so we want to solve for our boundary conditions. Uh, so first we'll solve for a. Uh, when t equals 0, uh, x is at, a, at the beginning point, x a, right? Okay, so then I'll plug that information into our equation. x of 0 equals x of a, we know that, equals the equation with the 0 plugged in for all the t's. Okay, and so then you quickly realize that x of a equals a. So we have 1 done. Solve for C. Uh, the problem states that the particle is under a constant force. Okay, so F equals MA. So if it's under a constant force, then acceleration must exist. Uh, and most importantly, C must exist. Um, C doesn't drop out. Okay, uh, so this means that uh, the acceleration is a function of time. Oh, I guess if it doesn't have to. No. It always exists, it's maybe a constant, uh, but it also means that v is a function of time, so we know b exists, so we know acceleration exists, and we know b exists, uh, velocity exists. Using our equation of motion, um, the equation of motion undergrad physics, we know that c is really just a over squared, right? So we go up here and we look and we see c is really just the a, uh, a over 2, right? And also remember that you know f equals ma, so using that knowledge, Start out with our equation. We know what a is right now. We're solving for c. Okay. Uh, we know c equals this, right? Because that's the equation of motion from undergrad physics. Uh, and so then I substitute f divided by two, or excuse me, f over m, uh, which is from f equals ma. And then I change it around so it looks nicer. Okay. So now I have our c. My c equals this. Okay. That's my c. Solve for b. Now only. B, now B is the only unknown. We just solve for it. Okay, but uh, this is, you run into a little hiccup here. X, solve for B when. Uh, so what I did here was at time T, the big T, we know it's at X is at the final position, right? So at X of big T, it's really at X B, right? And we know all of this and we know all of this, okay? But then I plug in uh, the big T for all the, the equations here, right? And so then I'm left with this, and now I can just solve for b. And so I find b. So b is this. So now I know my c, my a, and my b. So then our equation of motion, I just plug it into the x of t. All right. So this is a, this is b, and then this is c. Oops, I can't get it right there. All right. So I know one, and then to find the derivative of the x dot, because we need that for the Lagrangian, it asks for it. We just take the derivative of equation one. So if you take the derivative of it, I use I just use Mathematica to calculate it. It's this, and I'll, so I have that. So I know my x and my x dot. I plug that into L for the Lagrangian, which goes to this mess. And this is x dot. Oops, yeah, just the square part, right? And then this is the original equation, OK? All right, so then you take the integral of this from 0 to t, and it'll output the classical action, but I don't want to do that by hand because it's a mess, so I'll use Mathematica to uh, evaluate the integral. And if you don't have Mathematica, you can use Wolfram Alpha. It's a website, wolframalpha.com. It should evaluate it for you just fine. So using Mathematica, uh, the first thing I do is I load my x variable. This is the equation of motion above. This is equation 1, I think. And then my x dot is just the derivative of the x, right, equation 1. This is this will save equation 2 to memory. And then I'll load L, I'll define what L is, and that loads these variables into L and then saves it into memory. And I'll evaluate the classical action. You integrate the L from t, for, for little t, from 0 to big T. Right, and you just see how fast Mathematica can do it. Done. So this is the answer.
uh, and it looks different from the solution in the back of the book, page 363. Uh, this is how he lists it, and this is how I list it, and it doesn't look right. But I checked, I set all my equations, uh, I set all my variables to numbers, and then I just evaluated what they are, and they are in fact the same equations, so that's the answer.